As of this video's publication, Curse of Arrows has two main classes. You have the melee non-magical warrior class and you have the ranged magical mage class. However, you aren't strictly limited to any one class and you can choose between these two anytime. They both have significant advantages, drawbacks and playstyles so you might prefer one over the other. However, since you are watching this, I can cut all the bullshit because you already know that mages are the superior class across the board. They have much crazier levels of damage, have almost no need for accuracy stats or in this case control, and can basically kill anything without needing to move at all. It is a press and hold attack button and win class. And even if playing melee is your preference because Nidorex is the most profitable and important boss to have on rerun, it is highly advised that you do build your magic levels as well, and in fact as a priority. I'll talk more about the warrior class another time. Now, because this video will try to be optimistic and contain all the information you should know about starting a mage or optimizing your current build, I highly suggest that you sit back, grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this as much as possible. As with all my videos, you can choose to hit the timestamps below to skip to a part that you are more interested in, however I would still recommend watching everything because nothing in this video will be irrelevant to you. Now oddly so, we shall be starting this video with an overview of skilling. This video will incorporate optimizing and speeding up your growth as much as possible with the best path. This however does not mean it is the only way for you to enjoy your RPG, so if you have your own preference or you are a more casual gamer then feel free to mess around with all the skills. But knowing that our objective is to optimize growth, it is extremely important that you understand why we need to discuss skilling. And as a mage, there will be three main skills you will consider. And the first is tailoring. Now tailoring is incredibly crucial to mages and you will not excel as a mage without it. And a lot of it. Tailoring allows you to not only craft tomes, but to craft the level 90 colored sets like the rage set and the corruption set and the strongest equipment set in the game right now, the level 100 turmoil set. Note that these sets are non-tradable so you must level up tailoring eventually in order to own and equip these. The next skill is crafting. Crafting allows the player to create relics which are equipable items that fit into the three relic slots in your inventory. Not only do these provide you with more damage or more EXP, some of these are also used in tailoring which also means tailoring EXP. For example, the fire relic allows you to craft all three tiers of fire based tomes, the ice relic allows you to craft all three tiers of ice based tomes, so on and so forth, you get the picture. However, I dare say that crafting is completely unnecessary for mages as you can simply buy all the relics you need from other players to raise your tailoring level. Now you also might think, wouldn't I be saving a lot of gold by crafting my own materials? And the answer is actually no, you are very wrong indeed. You see, it takes a lot of time to find the materials needed to craft relics and the materials sometimes even cost as much as the relics themselves. With this time at hand, it will instead be much wiser to grind places that give you the highest gold returns, video linked above, and use that gold to buy the relics directly. But I will talk all about that in this video as well so don't worry too much about it. So crafting, skip. Now the third skill is wood cutting. Wood cutting allows you to chuck wood like the wood chuck chuck and with the chuck wood you would chuck the wood into the crafting table to create relics and raise your crafting level. So wood is only used for creating relics meaning to say wood cutting is also completely unimportant because crafting is unimportant. In fact, you could simply buy any type of wood from other players. You don't need to harvest wood in this game at all. It is indeed an unimportant skill to have. So to end off this small chapter, too long didn't watch, you only need to focus on tailoring and nothing else. But that's that's good, that means you don't need to invest extra time and gold doing unnecessary chores. You not only need to streamline your playstyle to optimize your growth, the only way that matters. And with this information at hand, you already have an amazing head start. Now we move on to your stats and there are just two main ways you should build your mage to optimize your damage output across the levels. And this won't take very long. So when I talk about levels, I am only referring to magic level, not your player level nor your fortification level. Just your magic level alright? So prior to level 70, you will need at most 20 control points. No more, no less. The rest goes into spell power and I will explain why later on. But upon reaching level 70, you would do a stat reset for 20,000 gold and fully spec into spell power, no more control. This will be your build all the way to magic level 120 which is the level cap for any class or skill. And the reason for this is the level 70 night spawn set gives you so much control you never really need to invest into it to hit anything at all. And this is even more true for the level 90 and 100 sets. Mages are, for a lack of a better word, 
fucking broken. All right, let's move on to the meat and potatoes of this video. Starting off at level one, you will find yourself with a simple one. And in order for you to attack, you will need to equip single use tomes. You will only buy the basic level one fire tomes from the merchant at spawn until you reach level 90. Yes, trust me, this is the only tome you will ever need, especially if you aren't funded at all. These fire tomes are extremely cheap and are marginally weaker than the other tier one and tier two tomes. And you will also never need to worry about buying staves because the game gives you a fire staff and an elder fire staff for free later on. However, your shield and glove slots will be empty or you can opt to craft and equip a bronze shield and gloves with a little bit of smithing investment. Now what I highly advise you to do first is to unequip the fire tomes that you have and add them to your quick slot. This way you have visibility on your current tome quantity and it will help you gauge when it is time to buy more fire tomes from the merchant. You will also acquire wishes as you log in every day or as you open the magic and melee gift boxes you have. Do not use any of those wish rewards that you get right now and keep them for later. It is small and important things like this which is why you should not skip anything in this video. The first place to grind at for a little bit is a chicken gang slightly northwest of spawn. These chicks respawn extremely fast and drop the entire novice magic set which is a good starting gear set for some control and spell power. Raw dog 52 of these vegans and you're now level 10. Time to move on. We will go north 10 steps from here into the nature dungeon. We will be killing a lot of babies and by that I mean baby seedlings because plants don't feel pain apparently so this is cruelty free. The reason we are beating up children is because they drop the most important loot you will need for tailoring and like we talked about earlier, tailoring is a necessity for a good mage. These drops are magic essences, books and nature relics. So go ahead and manslaughter 387 of these happy things and you will be level 30 with a nice bag of materials. You earned it! Oh, and do not sell the magic essences and books you get because you will be an easy target for a good deal. Instead, keep them for your own tailoring needs unless you are able to snag a sweet exchange rate, whatever that is from when you are watching this video. Feel free to sell the anti poison serums to the merchant for a spicy 1500 gold a piece and this is worth 150 fire tomes and that would be an indefinite farm cycle for you right now. Upon reaching level 30, you will find a fire staff in your level 30 magic gift box and this is an incredible boon. Not only does this give you 5% more innate control and 5% more damage overall, you also consume 25% less fire type tomes which is huge for cost savings. You should now leave the shaken baby seedlings alone and move on to seedlings where you would be able to two hit these buggers. But here comes the first tedious farming of your Curse of Arrows career. You will be farming here from level 30 all the way to level 70. That's right, you will be mashing 22,000 seedling brains and your own sanity as well to achieve this. Now the reason why I recommend this is because seedlings are one of the most invaluable farming locations as they provide millions upon millions of gold worth of drops in the form of magic essences, books, nature relics and merchant sellables like the anti-poison serums and health flasks. From when this video is recorded, if you can kill seedlings in 2 hits, that would net you about 12 million gold worth of drops per hour and if you can kill seedlings in 1 hit, which is an easy feat, that would net you about 24 million gold worth of drops per hour. All the drops will eventually be used for raising your tailoring level or for trading with other players if you need other kinds of tailoring materials like relics. This will take you well over 6 hours of non-stop grinding which is also anywhere between 80 to 150 million gold worth of drops. I mean, you can choose to farm elsewhere, that's completely up to you but chances are you will still come back here many times because you either need the gold or you need the materials. So just focus on this spot. Now we're gonna segue a little bit because I assume you aren't built different and would eventually be sick of the grind and that is okay. So whenever there is an active world boost, every player receives an additional 50% EXP for doing anything and that includes mobbing or skilling. So take the time to pause the mobbing to bring the magic essences and books you find to the tailoring station south of spawn. Focus solely on whichever craft gives you the most EXP to raise your tailoring level as much as possible during this world boost. You want to abuse the world boost only for tailoring because this effectively cuts your tailoring cost by 33% and that is potentially going to be a good 70 to 100 million gold worth of savings. If you find that you are at an imbalance of material, usually a shortage of books in the early game, then sell off some excess magic essences at a meaningful market rate and try to buy books off players at a discount. I would still advise you not to use your wish rewards right now. And now back to leveling, congrats! You have probably spent a couple of days getting to this point and you can finally pop open the level 70 magic gift box for an elder fire staff. You can also equip the very powerful level 70 night spawn gear set which you can actually buy off players for as cheap as 500k gold for the entire set. But this puts you in a pickle. You could either go with the elder fire staff for cost savings on your fire tomes or use the level 70 night spawn staff for slightly higher overall stats but forgo the cost savings on your fire tomes. I personally prefer the night spawn staff but that is entirely your choice. So now that we have a huge boost in control and spell power, we can choose to venture elsewhere for greater EXP and a break from the mundane. While you should still hop on the seedlings whenever you are low on material or gold, I now highly recommend you start farming these Dane Vandalings in the crypts of Nidorex in the Shadow Dunes. These guys hit extremely hard but you should be able to handle them from 
from a distance just fine. Just make sure you always have a lot of potions on you. And I highly recommend buying flasks of life from players at a rate of 10,000 per 6 million. This would give you far superior healing to gold cost ratio as opposed to using health flasks. And now that you're level 90, well done! This is where the game starts to get less mundane and a little bit more engaging and fun. By this point, you should definitely focus on getting your tailoring up to level 82. This allows you to craft the entire level 90 rage set, which is not only the cheapest in material cost, but also the cheapest in terms of tome use. I still wouldn't recommend you using your wish rewards right now prior to tailoring level 82, so just continue hoarding them, but that is entirely up to you right now. While you can still opt for the incredibly cost-effective fire tomes for 10 gold apiece, you can also choose to treat yourself with buying inferno tomes at a very low rate of 100 gold a piece from other players. This allows you to do a lot more damage than using tier 1 fire tomes, but why do we need to do so much more damage right now? That is because we will be focusing all of our efforts grinding Nidorex the Vengeful at 100% turmoil. I have two videos covering all you need to know about this particular boss fight linked up above, but do know that it is incredibly important we farm this boss for both EXP and her drops. Keep at it until you reach level 95. Doing so should net you a very decent number of slivers, legs of Nidorex, eyes of Nidorex, and a whole bunch of tier 3 tomes. This is extremely important because it reduces the potential cost of crafting your eventual turmoil set by hundreds of millions when you reach level 100 in magic. This is also when I would recommend exploring farming nature elders as you should be more than capable to kill them quickly enough so that you can get a ton of books in the process. So yay, you have officially unlocked bossing. Now, between level 96 and level 100, this is a complete dead zone. This is where you really have to grind a lot. For instance, getting from level 96 to 100 solely on disdain venom links requires you to kill about 8,000 of these spiders it will be boring and it will be extremely painful, but your only alternative right now is to interchange between farming Nidorexi or farming Nature Elders. This was definitely not fun for me. And whoop de doo we are now level 100 in magic! Make sure your tailoring is raised to level 90 so you can finally craft the definitive best gear set in the game, the Turmoil set. This is the best time to start using your wish rewards for additional skilling EXP which stacks during world boosts. And if you still need material, you already know what to do, but if you skip to this point, simply grind seedlings for magic essences or nature elders for books. This beast of a turmoil set unlocks insane potential in your damage output, setting you up for 4000 damage per hit easily. At this point, you have already completed the entire mage path and you are free to do many crazy feats like farming all kinds of bosses, raising your woodcutting to level 2, or to grind up your melee levels to equip shields and gloves. So that is the entire mage guide summarized in one single video. I dare say there were more than sufficient information here to really steer you the right way. However, like I said, this is not the only way that you can do it. It is simply the most boring but cleanest approach in building the strongest mage in the shortest amount of time. So feel free to pause and explore the game for what else it is worth according to your time and interest. This isn't a race after all. So hopefully this video helped you out and if it did, don't forget to let me know down in the comments below. I truly apologize this video was so lengthy but it truly was the best I could manage. Let me know if you are faced with any issues at all and definitely let me know if there is anything else I can make a video on to help you in your Curse of Arrows journey. But right now what you can look forward to in the near future is that I will be doing another video covering the warrior very soon. So hope you guys enjoyed today's content. If you did, don't forget to thumbs up. It really helps the channel and subscribe for more Curse of Arrows content. Now with that said, this has been Dairy Free to Play and as always, I will see you in the next video.